In this section, we're going to look at some slightly harder concepts to do with fractions. And the first of these is common denominators. And the way you find a common denominator between two fractions is you find the lowest common multiple of the denominators. So I think the easiest way to demonstrate this is to go through an example. So here we need to put these three fractions in ascending order. And to put them in an order, it's much easier if you've got the same denominator for each fraction. So the first step is find the lowest common multiple of those denominators, which are 3, 5 and 4. I'm not going to go through how to find that in too much detail here. Uh, we have gone through it in an earlier section, so if you're not sure, I recommend going back and watching that again. So the lowest common multiple of 3, 5 and 4 is 60. And then you want to look at how many times each of your denominators goes into that new number. So. 3 goes in 60 20 times, 5 goes in 12 times, and 4 goes in 15 times. So if we write out our new fractions, 2 thirds, the denominator is going to be 60. And then to find the numerator, all you do is multiply your old numerator by this number over here. So we're going to do 2 times 20, and that's going to give us 40. And then you want to do exactly the same thing for the other, three, uh, other two fractions. So you've got 3 fifths, it will be 60 on the bottom, and then you want to do 3 times 12, so 36. And then you've got 1 quarter, again 60 on the bottom, and your numerator will be 1 times 15, so you get 15 over 60. So now we've got these three fractions, it's much easier to put them in ascending order now. So we've got 15 over 60, then 36 over 60, excuse me, and then 40 over 60. When you're writing your final answer, just be careful that you write the fractions out in their original form. So the smallest one is 15 over 60, which is a quarter, so that goes first. Second biggest is 36 over 60, which is 3 fifths. And then the largest is 40 over 60, which is 2 thirds. And that's your final answer. Now let's look at how you add and subtract fractions. The first step usually is to convert your numbers into improper fractions, then find common denominators and then you can simply just add your numerators. So this example, we've got one and a seventh, seventh plus two and a half. First step, you wanna convert those, those uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions. So one and a seventh becomes eight sevenths. And again, we've gone over this in a previous section, so if you're a bit unsure, maybe go back and watch that part again. So one and one seventh becomes eight sevenths and two and a half becomes five halves, or five over two. Now we need to find common denominators, which we've just looked at. So the lowest common multiple of seven and two is 14. So that's going to be the new denominator for each fraction. And seven goes into 14 twice, so that means we need to double the eight. We get 16. And two goes into 14 seven times, so we need to times the five by seven which is 35. Now to get our final answer, you can keep the bottom as just 14. And all you have to do is add your two, nu two numerators. So 16 plus 35, and that gives you 51. They might ask you to give your answer as a mixed number. So it just sort of depends on, depends on the question. But here we can leave our final answer as an improper fraction. Let's have a look at just one more example for adding and subtracting fractions. This one is now a subtraction. Same method as before. First, we want to convert into improper fractions. So three and five sixths, three holes have got 18 sixths. So 18 plus five gives you 23 sixths. And then you want to convert your two and a quarter to improper fraction as well. There are going to be 
eight quarters in your two holes, plus the one you've got already, so that's nine over four. Now we need to convert these two improper fractions to have the same denominator. And the lowest common multiple of four and six is 12. So they're both gonna be over 12. And six goes into 12 twice, so you have to double your 23, so you get 46. And four goes into 12 three times, so you times your nine by three, which gives you 27. Oops, there we go. So now, as before, you keep the bottom the same and you just have to subtract your numerators. So 46, take away 27 is going to be 19. So you get 19 over 12. And you can't simplify this any further. You can't divide 19 or 12 by any further numbers. So 19 over 12 is your final answer. Here we can just convert this into a mixed number. It just depends on what the question's asked for. But if they ask you to convert it to a mixed number, you just do that step right at the end. So how many 12s go into 19? That's one. And you have a remainder of seven. So it's going to be one and seven twelfths. It's always a good idea to look at these sorts of concepts in the setting of an exam. So here we're going to look at a few different exam questions involving the concepts we've been looking at with fractions. This first one, you can see it's a two part question, two marks for each part, and it's fairly straightforward addition and division questions involving fractions. So we're doing two sevenths plus a fifth, and we need to find a common denominator before we can add them. Seven and five both go into 35, so we can choose 35 as our denominator. 7 goes into 35 5 times, so we need to do 2 times 5, which is 10. And 5 goes into 35 7 times, so we do 7 times 1, and we get 7. And then now we simply just add the numerators, and we get 10 plus 7, which is 17. So we get 17 over 35 as our final answer, and we can't simplify that any further. Part B... Now we're doing a division. You can see we've got a mixed number there, so the first thing we need to do is convert that into an improper fraction. We've got one whole, which is the same as three thirds. So if we add that to the two thirds, we've got five thirds in total. And we're dividing by three quarters. Now we need to flip this second fraction, three quarters, and change the division sign to a multiplication sign. So we get 5 thirds times by 4 thirds. And then the top, 5 times 4 becomes 20. And 3 times 3 becomes 9. And we can't simplify this any further either. So we get 20 over 9 for part B.